42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Is that Newton? And we're about to head to the Newton Police Department as we speak. Going through this little narrow alley. It's a good but I don't. I mean, look, I'm, I barely fit through it. Check this out. Oh, you're, he's wall to wall. Newton, raise the storm. And then, you have to go right there. Cigarettes. Looks like Newton has two. Cigarette receptacles. So we're gonna be here for a, a couple hours, um, and we uh, would like to know where we can use our um, our medication because I just want to make sure it's okay if we medicate out here where we, we smoke tobacco. Uh, so go. you're gonna be out and about? Or? Yeah, um, we were hoping we can just be here for five minutes and, and by your smoking area. Is that all right, or do we have to be? I, I, wherever you guys want us to go, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do it here. I, I wouldn't do it right here. Okay. We don't like to do it where, God forbid, all of a sudden someone in town says, "Oh, they're smoking marijuana," right. and then you get called, and we gotta they bother you in the process. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. This is probably. Do you, do you have your cards on you? Have your yeah. Yeah. Real quick? Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go in the back and, and talk to the yeah. boss. You, yeah. Do you have your packaging with you? Yes. Can I see it? Sure. Absolutely. Educated yes. Today. This yeah. is my uh, the right. packaging it comes in. Yeah. And my one hitter. Yeah. That's from. Greenleaf? You yeah, so your initial, uh, I want to give that to you. <laughs> no, you can't have it. I got to stand on so the tobacco So your initial question side. was, can you smoke out here? Uh, I'm going to tell you yes, but it has to be outside of 25 feet. I would just sure. ask you to try to use some uh, judgment as far as you have to realize that there are potentially domestic violence victims coming in here. There are victims of violent right. crimes potentially I'm coming sure. in here. Yeah. There's yeah. children yeah. potentially yeah. coming in here. Yeah. So you need to be cognizant of that. That's Under the letter of the law, 25 feet, you know, I don't think you may have officers come up to you and be inquisitive as to what you're doing. I think if you handle it the way that you guys handled it, that uh, most officers are going to be receptive to what you're telling them. Okay. And they're going to recite the law, or they're going to do like I did and go say, I have no idea, I'm going to go find out. This cop was the first one that ever was so impressive. He, he looked at your cards like you, you were Charlie from the Chocolate Factory. You had the golden ticket. He never seen one. I've never seen one. Can I please see it? Please. I want to see one. Hey, everybody, look what I got. <laughs> yeah, I got a golden yours? ticket. Where was your golden ticket, damn it? My golden ticket's at home. He I left was, his ticket at home. It's it's the bad That's why thing. he's not smoking. It should be on my my driver's license. It's K95901074. Smoking a joint. Yeah, Scotty. Let's go do that. Credit card swipe Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we give him my card and Lefty's card. And of course, Chucky. Chucky. What the f are you thinking, hold Chucky? On, hold on. Chucky, what happened? Where was your card today, Chucky? I forgot it. You forgot your card? <laughs> <laughs> Were you smoking? How the fuck do you do an INE tour without a car? <laughs> Wait, hold up. How did you answer yeah, that question? Uh, I was riding the sour diesel train and it just, uh, <laughs> I left it on the seat of the train. I'm sorry. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Stop arresting patients! Stop arresting patients! Welcome to CMMNJ TV. Every 
42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. I'm Ken Walski, Executive Director of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey. The mission of our organization is to educate the public about the benefits of marijuana. Marijuana is a safe, effective, and inexpensive therapeutic agent for a wide variety of diseases, symptoms, and conditions. No patient should suffer needlessly without it, and no patient should ever go to jail for following the advice of a doctor. Join us and learn more about the exciting science of medical marijuana. With me today in the Princeton TV studio is Roman Capers, medical marijuana advocate from Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Welcome, Roman. Thank you, Ken. Rowan, I understand you have glaucoma and you use medical marijuana for your glaucoma. Uh, glaucoma is one of the leading causes of blindness in America. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about how long you've had it and, um, and how it affects you if it does, if you notice it? I was diagnosed in 2006 and I was put on drops, which I took at times two times a day, at times three times a day. And my intraocular pressure bounced up and down, up and down. But it wasn't that bad until, I guess, about three years ago now. Um, right before I registered for the medical marijuana program, my pressure started really being out of control, and I had been losing eyesight. Uh, I became a patient, and but from using medical marijuana, it took about a year for me to find the right dose because, unfortunately, in the program that we have in New Jersey, there is nobody to guide patients and tell them how and what and why, and there's not a lot of studies. So it took me a while to figure out what my good dose is, and I finally was able to get my interocular pressure down equal in both mm -hmm. eyes. Prior to that, I had really bad headaches. I was losing eyesight. I'd get very nauseous. My eyes get very tired. They still do get tired at times. Um, it was very, very debilitating and very scary that, some, that I was going blind. Yeah. Now, intraocular pressure is the pressure within the eyeball mm -hmm. of the fluid, uh, and this, uh, when it becomes normal intraocular pressure, is between 10 and 20. So, uh, consistent intraocular pressures above 20 would be diagnostic for glaucoma. Now, uh, when the when the pressure in the eyeball is above 20 consistently, this can damage the optic nerve and, and, and cause uh, permanent, permanent damage, can cause permanent blindness. So, yeah. so that's uh, basically, um, uh, just, just to clarify some of the terms that you use. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and uh, so the marijuana uh, has, has been consistently keeping the intraocular pressure down? Yes. Yes, I actually had a hemorrhage on the left optic nerve mm -hmm. previous to starting medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. It's great. Now, now, have you noticed uh, any side effects or un unfortunate effects from the use of marijuana? Uh, all medicines have various side effects. Uh, uh. I found that the high that I liked to get when I was in my 20s and 30s, mm -hmm. I don't so much like anymore. I don't function well high. Mm -hmm. So I really want to dispel that myth that medical marijuana patients are a bunch of stoners mm -hmm. because I had to find the right balance of where I wasn't stoned all the time and I could function and yet still medicate my eyes. So other than at times getting the munchies, um, I sleep much better. My pain level has come down. I do have non-qualifying conditions. I've cut out almost half my Oxycontin just since I've, for the past two years being on medical marijuana. Um, I said my vision, I have not lost any eyesight in the past year. Mm -hmm. that's, that's terrific. Now, one of the uh, drawbacks and, and, and problems with people who uh, have, or people who use medical marijuana for glaucoma is that you need to keep a steady state. Mm -hmm. uh, so typically, if you smoke marijuana, the effects wear off in a couple of hours. Um, and if you eat marijuana, then uh, the effects last longer. Uh, uh, how do you use marijuana? Every possible way. <laughs> <laughs> I find I do better um, consuming edibles. I love tinctures. I find they mm -hmm. work faster mm -hmm. and I don't get as high. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy vaporizing. Again, I don't get as high as smoking, but if I'm very nauseous, I have to smoke. Mm -hmm. I find that the edibles, tinctures, vaping mm -hmm. don't help mm -hmm. the nausea. And I've never seen anything like it. In two seconds, the nausea is gone. Mm -hmm. And so it, de it depends. It depends yeah. what I absolutely need it for. And I'm a quali I am qualify in New Jersey because I'm a glaucoma patient, mm -hmm. but it's helping so many other disabilities that I have. And I'm actually 
disabled and on um, supplemental Social Security income, mm -hmm. SSI, for other things that don't qualify in New Jersey, which make absolutely no sense. Yeah. Every 42 seconds, somebody's arrested for marijuana. Uh, now, you have a medicinal marijuana program ID card. Mm -hmm. um, how long have you had it? And tell me about what was the process for getting it? I had to find, first of all, a doctor who was listed in the New Jersey Medical Marijuana Program and make an appointment. Mm -hmm. I had my ophthalmologist fax my records over to him so that I could prove that I was a glaucoma patient and that my glaucoma was not being controlled by drops. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to say earlier that I was facing surgery. I was facing them putting tubes in my eyes mm -hmm. to let the fluid flow back and forth. And mm -hmm. that, to answer your question about intraocular pressure, mm -hmm. that what it is is the fluid doesn't flow back and forth in and out of the eye canal and it builds up. I lost my place. I'm sorry. Oh, you, well, you had the ophthalmologist fax yeah, your records right. to, the, to this doctor who to, was in the program. Now, in the they, program. The, he was right. not a, an eye doctor, an ophthalmologist. No. Or, uh, but anyway, he, he agreed to yeah. take you on yes. with your, your problem, your glaucoma problem. And I, so he, I saw him. I, he went over my records. He put everything into the state's website, the Department mm -hmm. of Health contacted me. They pretty much did everything. It was pretty easy for me. Mm -hmm. And I paid, I, because I'm on SSI, it was only $20 for me. I paid my $20 and I was approved. So how was the marijuana from the, uh, the alternative treatment centers? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, tell me Iffy. about it. Did you go to Iffy. more than one? Uh, well, first I went to Greenleaf in Montclair and it was the marijuana was okay. I found out at that point that I was very s sensitive to sativas. They made me very uncomfortable and anxious, so I needed more indica. And Greenleaf didn't have indica, which is part of the problem of when they started running out of medicine. It seemed that everybody wanted indica. Mm -hmm. um, I then went to um, CCF, Compassionate Care Foundation, in Little Egg Harbor Township mm -hmm. and came home with an ounce and a half of what I call hay. Um, it was these little tiny dried out buds that, because Governor Christie wanted the facility to open faster, they cut their plants down early, they rushed the curing, and basically it was useless. You got a headache. I know that there were patients who had seizures where it didn't do anything for their seizures. It really didn't do anything for me. And I'm still fighting with them, trying to get them to take that back and at least exchange mm -hmm. some decent medicine for me, which it says on their website that they do. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Garden State Dispensary. Um, their medicine actually was better, but from what I understand, it's not consistent. Mm -hmm. um, I was interestingly told at Garden State Dispensary that the reason your eyes get red is because there's pollen in the cannabis. And so again, there's a lot of misinformation being told to patients and yet not that real guidance that pa people who are sick using that's, for a lot of us, a new medication to tell us how to use it. And there are so many, I don't want to get off on a tangent. No, it's, it's all right, no. Yeah. Um, There's so it's, many. It's interesting what, what you're saying. Cannabinoids and mm -hmm. terpenes and bioflavonoids that are in each strain of marijuana and even mm -hmm. each plant in the same strain may not have that same chemical makeup. And so it really is a medicine. It's not like, oh, just go get some pot and it's going to help you. Mm -hmm. If you have seizures, you need a certain balance of cannabinoids. If you have inflammation, there are other certain cannabinoids that help you. And we're learning more and more about this. It's not just about THC and CBD anymore. There are plenty of compounds that are being researched and then we run into the problem of scheduling. Um, and you did mention that you have other conditions uh, that uh, marijuana helps with. Uh, uh, I, I would assume chronic pain is one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that, Rowan. I have cervical stenosis and um, lumbar stenosis. And that is a very painful condition. I've been on so many different narcotics for so many years. I, I'm not even going to name them all. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. I don't know if I told you this. I died in 1992 because uh. I had been taken off of opiates and told to just take aspirin. And I actually was taking enteric-coated aspirin, as, as the bottle said. I wasn't downing 10 at a time. And I woke up one day and didn't feel well, ended up in the emergency room, and I died. 
-hmm. I had a bleeding ulcer. I didn't mm -hmm. know I had a bleeding ulcer, and it was from the aspirin. Mm -hmm. But aspirin's yeah. over the counter, right. and people take it all the time. Right. People think nothing of taking right. aspirin, and yet uh, about 500 people a year at least die uh, from aspirin. Aspirin can cause anaphylactic uh, mm -hmm. reaction and cause instant death. Uh, and uh, it can also lead to bleeding problems, as, as you've experienced. Uh, um, and so, it, you know, it's, it's, it's an um, uh, anticoagulant, so it uh, mm -hmm. thins the blood. It's so, you know, it certainly is, um, you know, uh, not, not, a, not a simple drug. And, you know, actually, aspirin never went through the uh, FDA approval process. Really? You know, uh, uh, many people say, well, they don't believe in marijuana therapy because it hasn't been through the FDA approval process. but. But aspirin is one of those old drugs that were grandfathered in, uh -huh. so they, they never they never had to go through that. Um, but um, you know you've been doing uh, you've been speaking out about medical marijuana uh, and doing a great service to patients, uh, Rowena. I have to congratulate you for you know the uh, the work that you're doing and um, and and just the fact that you're you're willing to to. Um, just do away with your patient confidentiality and, mm -hmm. and talk about these, you know, important and personal issues in your life and how marijuana helps you. You know, this was Thank you. this was uh, uh, this was how uh, this was how we got the bill passed in in, in the legislature. The the Compassionate Use Medical Marijuana Act was in the legislature for five years, and um, what convinced the legislators was the stories of patients like yourself mm -hmm. who just have you know the undeniable personal experience of having marijuana help them with a number of conditions. That's why I do this. Um, when I first, I actually, when I found out I was going to qualify as patient, came to a Coalition of Medical Marijuana New Jersey meeting to find out what you guys could do for me, how you could help me, and it was sort of like me, 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 me. And what I learned was the program was basically a sham, and I walked out of there thinking, I need to help other people and it just sort of snowballed. I never intended to become an activist, but I saw how this helped me. I saw how it's helping other patients and I've had the honor, and I do believe it's an honor, to work with other patients to help them get their cards, to help them find doctors and see their lives start to turn around. Um, I find that if I can reach just one person and say, hey, this changed my life, it can change yours, then I feel like I'm doing something and that's very important to me. Yeah. Um, you're doing great work, and as a patient, you know that you, you mentioned that some. Of the, you seem to seem. It seems to me that the uh, the medical marijuana program is working effectively for you. You have enough mar marijuana uh, to to last you for for a month from the two ounces. Is that sufficient amount for you? I have never been able to afford two ounces of uh, marijuana from the state. Um, hmm. At five hundred dollars an ounce plus tax, we're talking about twelve hundred dollars a month. I'm on SSI. Mm -hmm. My income is $725 a month. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky that I have a friend who helps me out, mm -hmm. but without that friend, I would not even be able to begin to use the state program. So mm -hmm. I find that, I'm gonna stop that. Well, that, that's good, uh, but aside from uh, the, um, uh, the price. Uh, are there other things in the in the medicinal marijuana program that you think need to be changed to to more effectively meet the needs of the the patients uh, uh, in the state? Absolutely. Um, right now, the only thing available are dried buds or flowers, um, which is basically smokable or vaporizable marijuana. You can make it into a butter or an oil. It's labor intensive. I have a balance disorder, so I cannot stand in my kitchen and cook. So I'm not able to process my marijuana into other things. I think that the dispensaries should have something other than dried flowers, not just for adult patients, but for the pediatric patients. Uh, they can't smoke. Some of them are on oxygen. That would be crazy to light something up. Um, the caregiver program. Um, if When I am really sick, I cannot get to a dispensary. No one is allowed to go for me unless they're my caregiver. My caregiver, because he or she is not on SSI, they have to pay a $200 fee plus a $75 fee for fingerprinting. Mm -hmm. And then every two years, they have to pay that $200 again. That's not fair. That's not a caregiver like in California who can grow 10 or 12 plants for me 
and they're paying for that right. It's all that a caregiver in New Jersey can do is pick up your medicine and possibly carry it for you. Um, I think the qualifying conditions definitely need to be expanded, especially PTSD. And I also have PTSD. I'm not from combat, but from uh, childhood molestation, uh, rapes, I was just, I don't know if I want to say this on camera, a victim for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of bad stuff happen to me. And I did have an, I forgot the word, transcontinental stalker. Which, who wanted to kill me and did kidnap me. So I have severe, severe trauma in my history. Mm -hmm. And while that's managed and under control, there are still times when I get very anxious or get anxiety attacks. And I have found that there are certain strains of cannabis that help that. By the same token, why we're not helping our vets that come back with PTSD is just criminal. Um, in New Jersey, they're talking about doing a high CBD oil, but nobody's talking about doing a high THC oil for the cancer patients, whether they're pediatric or adult. Um, there are so many things. And there's so yeah. much that needs to be changed. It's too overregulated. Uh, somebody who works in a school, can they fire them? Um, the whole employment thing, there was somebody, I believe, who worked for New Jersey Transit but didn't drive a train, and she got fired because she came up positive and she was a medical marijuana patient. I had um, an 88-year-old woman come to me who weighed, actually I think I have this backwards, an 82-year-old woman who weighed 88 pounds. And she didn't want to get high. Like Governor Christie says, we're all just a bunch of potheads who want to get high. She wanted to eat. She wants to live. And she had to find a doctor that actually would work with her and make her condition of wasting syndrome, but not associated with AIDS or cancer, fit into the medical marijuana program just so she could live. I don't understand that. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Um, not having edibles available after such a long time, uh, there was, a, of course, the Compassionate Use Medical Marijuana Act passed in 2010, and uh, there were supposed to be um, lozenges available then, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, edibles never were available. and. Uh, until this um, uh, Linda Stender's bill passed um, uh, just about a year ago now, mm -hmm. and which uh, provided for edibles, but uh, these edibles have never surfaced in the state of New Jersey yeah. yet, so um, that's uh, another issue. Uh, uh, Assemblywoman Stender did introduce assembly, another bill, 3525, which would fix many of the problems that are associated with the uh, um, uh, medicinal marijuana program, and, and hopefully that, that uh, uh, Bill will get some legs in, in the legislature. So. <clears throat> and uh, so I understand you also treated your dog with yes. medical marijuana. Uh, tell me about that. My dog was, di my service dog was diagnosed mm -hmm. with lymphoma and I was told chemo right away. And mm -hmm. she started having diarrhea, the side effects of chemo. Right. And I've read so much about cannabis oil treating cancer that I did some research and I started giving her cannabis oil and the diarrhea stopped, the vomiting stopped. She mm. started running around like a puppy. Um, CBS Channel 2 from New York came out and actually did a little story on her. And she had a better quality of life towards the end. Mm -hmm. And to me it's not at all surprising. Uh, animals have endocannabinoid mm -hmm. systems just as humans do. And uh, animals respond to uh, cannabis and uh, uh, respond in, in, in a therapeutic manner when it's, when it's given therapeutically and for the, for the proper reasons. All, all mammals have cannabinoid, endocannabinoid mm -hmm. systems, and it's a non-toxic drug. And it's interesting, in cats, it's out of their system in 13, 12 to 13 hours, so it can't even build up mm -hmm. that high. Mm -hmm. um, but you have something, I mean, there are um, cannabinoids in breast milk. It's something that our bodies naturally crave. And even some of the seizure disorders, they're finding that there's a deficiency in the, either at the CB1 level or the CB2 level, um, that something's not quite getting to where it needs to get to, um, that there's a deficiency in the body, and if once the levels are stable, and there is a doctor who is now checking levels mm -hmm. um, to find out how much, what, what are the levels of the cannabinoids in the bloodstream to find out therapeutic doses, which again gets into why this needs to be changed from a Schedule 1 to, it really shouldn't be scheduled at all, so there can be research. We need research. Patients need research. This is real medicine. Yeah. Uh, people need to stop treating it as, oh, you know, go smoke pot with your friends. That's not what we're doing. 
Um, yeah, I need to medicate every three to four hours for my eyes. Um, after a while, that's not fun anymore. There are some days where I just am like, I don't want to do this mm -hmm. anymore. I don't want to feel like I, like I feel. And then after a while, it stops working altogether. Um, the effects are the same, but you're not high. And I know I'm making no sense. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's, uh, well, it was very interesting what you were saying about the endocannabinoid system, too. And, uh, you know, this, the discovery of this endocannabinoid system, which is a system in every human mm -hmm. being and, and in animals as well, mammals, uh, mammals really, uh, that um, uh, provides the scientific basis for how marijuana can, um, you know, affect so many different symptoms and diseases and conditions. And, and Rowan, you've just, uh, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you today, and, uh, and, and thank you so much for coming into our, uh, pro, our studio here in Princeton to be part of CMMNJ-TV. Um, uh, th and thank you for li uh, watching this episode of CMMNJ TV. <laughs> I'm Ken Walski from the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey. For more information, find us on Facebook. Uh, and find us on Facebook, uh, or visit our website at www.cmmnj.org. Uh, and if you send us your email address, we'll give you monthly updates on uh, medical marijuana. Thank you. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. For more information about the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey, join us at our free public meetings on the second Tuesday of every month at the Lawrence Township Library in Mercer County, New Jersey, from 7 to 9 p.m. Snacks are served and all are welcome. Remember, every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone's arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone's arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone's arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody's arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds. Someone is arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone's arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody is arrested for marijuana. Cada 42 segundo, está uno arrestado por marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody is arrested for. Shotgun dice con yo hay todo mundo por marijuana. Every 42 seconds, somebody got arrested for marijuana. Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. <laughs> Every 42 seconds, someone is arrested for marijuana. It could be you.